We are the industrial engineering in a major manufacturing facility team. I'm David Litka. I'm Jenna Ritchie. I'm Mikhail Shukla. And I'm Bertha Wang. And our project is entitled Six Sigma Styles Analysis of the Glass Fabricating Process at Silver Line Industries. So our objectives for this presentation are to first define Six Sigma Styles Analysis, specifically the DMAIC acronym, which is the problem solving strategy that we used for our project. Next, we'll give a brief background of Silver Line Industries, which is the company that we study for our project. After that, we will outline the basics of Silverline's current manufacturing system and we'll describe problems that we found with this process. After that, we will propose solutions to these problems and discuss the effects that implementing these solutions would have. One of the Six Sigma tools we use is called DEMAIC. That stands for Define, Measure, Analyze, Improve, and Control. Now, each of these steps is vital to have a process be successful. The first step is to define the actual problem you have because you can't go into it without knowing what you're solving. The second part is to measure the data and analyze the data. Uh, you have to look for potential weaknesses in the data where the process could be hindered, and then you have to approve the data to solve the potential problems. The last step is to control the long-term benefits to make sure you're cons consistently improving. So a little bit of background. We worked with Silverline Windows. They're a company with a factory in North Brunswick, New Jersey. Um, throughout the past four weeks, we visited their facility several times. The company was founded in 1947 and it was acquired by Anderson Corporation in 2006. They're the nation's leading uh, manufacturer of vinyl windows. They produce over 7,000 a day. And their, um, their most typical window unit is the double hung replacement window as seen in that diagram. So we used a SIPOC diagram to identify the process we'll be studying. SIPOC stands for suppliers, inputs, <coughs> process, outputs, and customers. And we have limited our process to starting with the cutting of the glass and ending with the assemblage of the window, which includes a sash and a frame, and excluding shipping and packaging. So another tool we use to display the whole cycle of the manufacturing process is a value stream map. Um, as you can see, it gives the whole cycle of the window through the manufacturing process, starting with the customer's orders and ending at the delivery of the window to the customer. So we broke up the manufacturing process into six major steps, which we'll go into later with individual process maps. But um, under each individual step, there's a time where value is added um, to the window unit during that process. In between each uh, process is a delay time, a waiting period, where there's non-value added. So at Silverline's factory, during the uh, production of one window, approximately 40 minutes are spent adding value to the window, and two to three hours are spent with non-value added. Now here we have the floor map. Uh, in the floor map you can see that the space is used to make sure you maximize the amount of space used, but also minimize the amount of space that the glass will actually have to travel. Uh, we started at the bottom here with inventory, and it goes through a full loop to get to the assembly line where it finishes. This is a block diagram of the window assembly process. Due to the fact that the individual pieces of the window are often manufactured in various locations on the factory floor, the process is intricate and sometimes difficult to follow. So this diagram summarizes the process in a simple manner. Now the first macro process to the actual whole window making process is glass cutting. In this part, we get the glass that's brought to a machine on the forklift. Uh, you have 72 inch by 84 inch pieces of glass there. It's lifted, loaded, and then each individual sheet is tipped onto an airbed where it lays until it's moved over by the operator into the actual cutting area. Now a diamond blade will go one tenth, one tenth of the depth of the glass and make an incision. It's already optimized using the optimizing software, and once it's cut, it's shifted to two operators who will cut the glass, throw the scrap glass away, and put the actual pieces of glass into carts that hold 100 pieces of glass. Once a cart is full, it's moved to a waiting area, and then an empty cart is brought back to repeat the process. The second process that we defined is edge deletion. Edge deletion is an optional step in the <coughs> manufacturing process. Windows only go through edge deletion if they have a coating on the outside. Approximately 80% of silver lined windows do have this coating, so 80% will go through this process. During this process, a coated window is taken and it's rubbed against an abrasive wheel, which rotates and removes the coating along the perimeter of the window, so that during the spacer attachment process, the spacer, um, it makes it easier for the spacer to attach to the window. So the next step is the, is the spacer attachment process. The glass will roll out to two workers who will sandwich one spacer between two sheets of glass. Then the glass will roll into an oven where it is heated between 150 and 160 degrees Fahrenheit. The heat will activate the adhesive so that the planes will stick together. 
Then the module is rolled out to two more workers who will put two labels onto the top of the window. This is the first step that Silverline's tracing system is started. Then the module is placed on a cart where it is then rolled on to the next station. Which is the pump argon process. So once the windows have cooled to within five degrees of room temperature, they are taken to an argon machine. Now if the window modules have a green sticker on the top, then the operator will know to inject these windows with argon. So the operator will take a hose with a needle on the end and insert it into a hole in the tin spacer. The operator will then turn the machine on, which will fill the module with argon until the argon percentage has reached between 92 and 99%. Once this has occurred, the machine will turn off automatically. After that, the operator will use an air gun to insert a gold screw into the hole in the tin spacer. Now, if the window module does not require argon, the operator will simply insert a silver screw into the hole in the tin spacer. And after the entire cart has been completed, it will move on to the next process. The next process is the butyl application process. The operator will use a sort of gun to apply butyl on the corner of the module that, where the screw is located. So the operator will apply about four inches on the top and four inches down the side. Once they have applied it, they will use a smoothing tool to get an even coating on the butyl for easier assembly. The last step we focus on is the assembly of the actual window. So once the glass module is completed, um, Operators will take the module and they'll put it into a sash, which helps to remove pressure on the window when it's actually in use. So then the operators will take two sashes and they'll fit them into a frame. So one sash will go into the top half of the frame, the other sash will go into the bottom half of the frame. Once this is finished, um, you have one completed window module, which is ready for packaging and then shipping. Um, the method we use to identify the causes of glass breakage is the fishbone diagram. Um, the problems are broken up into six major steps or themes, measurements, machines, man, environment, methods, and materials. One problem Silverline has regarding the measurements um, is that they lack sufficient data collection. Problems they have regarding the environment include temper variation, such as when the glass is brought from the outside cold into the indoor heating, which subjects the glass to thermal, thermal shock. Another problem they have regarding the environment are inconsistencies or bumps in the factory floor, which places the glass at risk of breakage between transportation between stations. Uh, another major problem is with machines. Uh, the inherent problem with machines is that they offer a lot of variation because they are operator controlled. So the operator will be lowering the blade, lifting the blade, moving the glass through, and all of those introduce a source of like, sort of like a human error type thing, but it's more machine based. Uh, as we can see here, the diamond cutting, that is one of the major problems because the operator actually chooses how deep the diamond blade will go into the glass, and that can cause it to go too deep or too shallow, resulting in cracks in itself. Uh, furthermore, you have the heat lamp. Heat lamp introduces a source of thermal shock, which can compound upon any minor fractures you already have, and because of the expansion and the contraction of the glass, it can result in a breakage. Uh, lastly, the optimization software itself has a problem because although it does try and uh, make the best use of the glass, it still has about a 15% inefficiency, which is a little bit too much. Um, in methods, we've seen through our visits to Silverline several operator practices that we believe are contributing to their glass problem. Um, one example is during the actual cutting of the glass, the operators are supposed to carefully snap the glass. However, most of them resort just to quickly whipping it back and forth. Um, it's faster, but it doesn't necessarily um, provide the most even cut. Another problem is during butyl application. Since the butyl application isn't metered, it's difficult to get an even coating. So any bumps in the coating um, will put additional pressure on the glass later on when it's in the actual frame. Then finally, during the assembly process, when the window module is put into the sash and then side supports are hammered in to support the window, there's uh, contact between the hammer and the window oftentimes, which is introducing force to the glass. Okay, moving on to the man category. With over 1,000 employees involved in direct labor on the factory floor and on-site job training, Silverline's current labor-intensive manufacturing process uh, induces human error, such as things just as simply as dropping the glass. Under the materials category, there is no current inbound inspection on the raw glass that Silverline receives from Guardian, and so this suggests that there may be previous imperfections existing on the glass surface or the glass may be thinner than Guardian claims it is, which would therefore cause more breakage. Okay. 
So the method that we used to decide which of the problems that we identified as Silverline were the best opportunities to propose a solution was the use of a pew matrix. Um, we identified eight problems which are listed along the top and then we ranked them based on the severity of the problem in the factory, the long-term benefits that solving the problem would have, and then how costly solving those problems would be. Um, so by adding together the totals, we determined that the biggest problems were, um, were the problems that we felt we could pr propose the best solutions for were conducting fractography tests, reevaluating re the butyl application process, implementing a glass tracking system, and improving glass handling. Now one of the major solutions we proposed was fractography. Essentially fractography is just the study of how fractures propagate through a material that is cracked. Uh, for glass itself, glass has what is known as a brittle fracture, which means there's not elastic deformation to it, it just simply cracks. Uh, there are three major types of um, cracking for glass. The first one would be thermal shock. Uh, as we can see here, the thermal shock has a perpendicular crack uh, to the point of initial strain. Uh, this is obviously because the um, contraction and expansion process actually results in that type of crack. Uh, for impact shock, we have a disloca uh, dislocations in like a circular format, which um, is from the point of initial stress as well. Uh, for edge and surface damage, the edges and the surfaces are actually one of the most important parts. As we can see here in this formula, uh, the radius of curvature is actually what's important about the initial stress point. So it's not about the size, it's about the radius. So something like this would be equal to something like this. Despite that the middle is twice as big, they're both equal in importance. Uh, this is important to Silverline Industries because using fractography, they can start to pinpoint the exact location and why such a, their glass breakages are happening. Similarly to fractography, um, improving the traceability system would help in turn improve the data collection system of Silverline. So with traceability, currently Silverline with traceability system starts at the baser attachment process. If it were to start at the cutting, the cutting of the glass process, we would be able to uh, we'd be able to basically, we'd be able to um, look at the glass throughout the whole process and we'd be able to pinpoint exactly where and why problems are happening throughout the process. Um, we hope to implement software to identify the when and where glass breakages occur the most so we would be able to identify what problems to focus on and improve. For beetle application. To improve the current messy and inconsistent application of beetle, Silverland could consider metering the amount of beetle that came out of the gun per clip. Additionally, for a cleaner process, they could consider using a sort of beetle stamp or a machine automated applicator such as the Unity Series dispenser pictured here, which is offered by 3M. And to avoid the beetle application process altogether, they could consider welding the tin spacer back together after they had applied the argon. Continuing with the theme of avoiding the use of butyl altogether, um, Silverline could implement a chemical seal which would expand and then basically plug the hole and prevent any argon from escaping. Also, they could um, use a screw with a tighter thread. Um, the tighter thread would come in complete contact with the tin spacer. Uh, it would remove any air bubbles and theoretically would eliminate the need for butyl. Now the last major problem is the glass handling itself. As I was talking about earlier, they do, it does offer a lot of variation. For example, for the diamond blade pressure, it fluctuates anywhere between 30 newtons and 80 newtons, averaging at 50 newtons. Now, a way to combat this would be actually have a pressure reading shown to the operator as they lower the blade. So they see, oh, I'm at 40 newtons, now I'm at 45 newtons, now I'm at 50 newtons, now I need to stop. Before this, it would just be based on what they feel like is the proper pressure. Uh, the second thing is the snapping method, as we discussed this earlier too. Some people use whipping, some people just crack it downwards. The proper technique is to use two fingers on each side and do a quick snap downwards. A uh, way to actually determine how to stop this would actually fall under traceability. Once we start pinpointing the exact operator that keeps breaking this glass, we can look at their technique of snapping and then start to fix it. Uh, the edge deletion process itself is a major problem because in this one you have an abrasive material going 2,000 rotations per, set, per minute and it's rubbing up against the glass. When you're ever, whenever you're rubbing up against glass, you're introducing those faults that I was mentioning earlier with the edge and surface damage. Uh, to avoid this edge and surface damage completely, what you would want to do is have introduce a chemical solvent to it that wouldn't interfere with the glass's chemistry, but would still get rid of the edge's surface. Um, lastly, the oven press that comes right after the edge deletion process expounds upon any fractures that might have happened during the edge deletion. So, throughout our weeks at Silverline, we've seen that the current processes they use certainly work as they're producing 7,000 windows a day. 
However, we believe that um, by implementing newer technologies, Silverline will be able to increase their operating efficiency, which is extremely important. Um, because they operate on such a small profit margin, any increases in operating efficiency would be extremely beneficial to the company. Uh, we believe that the solutions we have proposed, um, which are going to be taken into consideration, uh, we know that there are obviously barriers to implementation. Whenever you have upheaval in a factory, whether you need to purchase new equipment, redesign the layout of the floor, or implement new technology, um, there's going to be costs associated, but we believe that the long-term benefits of our solutions outweigh any of the costs associated with implementing them. Lastly, we would like to thank uh, Silverline Industries, especially Scott Sturr, Quality Assurance Manager, and Andy Carr, the Vice President. We'd also like to thank our mentor, Brandon Feiss, uh, our RTA, Laura Gunderson, guest speaker, Steve Mercurio, who taught us about fractography, uh, the director, Eileen Rosen, and Assistant Director, John Patrick Antoine. We would also like to thank all the sponsors, especially Rutgers University. And now we're opening up the floor to any questions. Will the company actually get your recommendations? Yeah, yeah they're, they're actually right there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we actually had the presentation yesterday. We're going to start the hour meeting and go over with them. Yeah, we've been working hand in hand with them throughout the test for me, so. Any further questions? Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.